released in Indonesia in 2011 and spearheaded by Welsh director Gareth Evans, The Raid quickly became a favourite for many fans of the action movie genre. The Raid soon received a Western English release produced under Sony Pictures Entertainment less than a year later under the name The Raid Redemption. The movie earned awards, accolades and acclaim for its refined script, brilliant pacing and most importantly, its incredibly well executed action scenes. These awards would include an official selection at the Sundance Film Festival, South by Southwest Film Festival, and audience choice at the Toronto Film Festival to name but a few. Puts Western action movies to shame, Empire. Unapologetically brutal, the year's most turbocharged film, USA Today. If it's not the best action movie of the year, we'll eat a fridge, Guardian. High praise from the elites. So why is this film held in such high regard? My theory? The action design. So, what is action design? Put simply, action design is the process within a production by which an action concept is brought from the script to the screen. The specifics can change from production to production, from something as large as a five-story building being sieged by police as our protagonist attempts a daring escape before it explodes. Something as small as someone falling down a hill. A really big hill. This is where the Is he done falling? This is where the rage shines. From pre-pre-production, when the movie is nothing but a concept in Gareth Evans' mind, he is considering practical execution and planning ahead. When the script is being written, he is concerned with the actions and the space a sequence will take place in. Sometimes the choreography will end up dictating to us how the set design needs to be. Um, we might have certain ideas in choreography which takes place like two or three months before pre-production starts. And we'll have specific ideas of uh, movements and falls which demand that we need like certain props or certain structures for the rooms. This is apparent during the pre-production of the movie, in which his art director had to figure out how to build a set in which it would be possible to fall through an apartment floor to another apartment floor. Action! Yang kita mau itu kita bisa wujudkan sesuai dengan jalannya skenario yang kita bikin. Kalau yang asli kita nggak bisa rubah-rubah menjadi or when they needed to have an atrium with an indoor balcony, as the script called for it to be used multiple times. And of course, they built that too. itu ada gedung kosong tapi tidak ada atrium seperti ini atau bisa dibilang courtyard atau balkon ya balkon dalam Jadi kita bikin uh, courtyard ini dua lantai 
Sebenarnya nantinya uh, courtyard ini mau di CG menjadi 15 lantai malah. For more elaborate stunts and set pieces, time is needed to set up and execute them on location. However, when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat and smaller scale engagements, Gareth's method of creating pre-visualization comes in handy. Normally on a production, creating previs for a sequence is done mostly using simple and quick CGI renderings to act as proof of concept with the camera movements planned digitally. Some of the earlier pioneers of this method are the Wachowskis. When planning to shoot the highway sequence for The Matrix Reloaded, it was so elaborate and had so many moving parts that they needed to plan out everything treating actors like pieces on a chessboard. Nowadays, it is fairly commonplace for a production to utilize previs. However, what is somewhat less common is the method of video storyboarding with real people for action sequences. But none are as bigger advocates of this method than a little video game developer known as Capcom. Most fans of the series remember some of the video storyboards from Devil May Cry 5 being an optional viewable extra from the game itself, spawning memes and funny clips of people in silly costumes flapping their wings like a bed and holding cardboard model vans in their hands like a child playing with toys. But these would act as a very useful tool for the animators to reference when designing the cutscenes. When looking back at a making of documentary, it can be seen that Capcom had been using this method all the way back in 2008 with Resident Evil 5. Despite this, the method is rarely seen on film productions and even rarer still that a director would oversee said method. Usually, when such a method is used, it is left for the stunt coordinators and stunt crew to put together and for the cinematographers and camera operators to shoot independent from them. The problem this causes is that the actors can't always perform what the stunt coordinators can perform, and camera operators can't always shoot in a way the stunt coordinators shoot. Differences between a controlled environment and lots of time, compared to a location shoot with limited time, can be enormous. These differences can lead to falling back on a method of shooting for coverage instead of shooting in sequence. Not every fight can come out as well as the Winter Soldier or the Matrix using this process. Without someone in control overseeing the same vision at both ends, you can end up with something like this. This is where the job of an action designer comes in, combined with video storyboarding. It is an action designer's job to oversee the process of an action sequence all the way through the production. Gareth Evans designs action, and in his case, he just also happens to be the director. The previs for me is always a tool through which I could be able to be comfortable with the action we were designing and the way we were going to present it. It's a given, it's the most invaluable tool I can have in my arsenal. When shooting the raid, Gareth works with the actors themselves to produce video storyboards for the fight scenes in pre-production, creating edited videos to use on location. It's a little bit of a bible really in terms of how strictly we follow it. I'd say that for every sequence, it's about 90 to 95 percent exactly the same. So once we've shot that previs, we've got that block of shots sitting on an edit. We can go through shot by shot by shot and then when we're on location, start replacing those shots with the production version. And to ensure all the actors were prepared to act out what they had planned out, he arranged to have the crew sent through a rigorous training boot camp. From close observation, it becomes clear there is passion, dedication and experience going to such a production to produce action sequences that are worth watching and in turn, a story that's worth telling. 
And if you don't believe how important and instrumental the video storyboards are, listen to Gareth yourself. So we never shoot coverage, we shoot jigsaw pieces. You know when something's wrong right there and then while you're on location. So you have that time and that safety net to fix it. Good. If you've made it to the end of the video, thank you, I appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, subscribe, like. Uh, suggestions are always welcome in the comments. I quite enjoyed making this video. It was quite nice to go through some of my personal favourite action scenes of the last couple decades. Who knows, if I get bored enough and I'm encouraged enough, I might make more video essays in the future, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.